Hello, it's Jeff again. Welcome to lecture two of Aligning Assessment with Course Objectives in the University Teaching Program at Cape Breton University. This lecture is on Bloom's Taxonomy, which is a way of classifying tasks that we ask students to carry out. When people talk about Bloom's taxonomy, most of the time they're talking about a picture like this. And if you go and Google Bloom's taxonomy, this is very likely what you're going to come up with. It is a ranking of cognitive tasks from remember at the bottom to create at the top, going from low complexity to high complexity. Before going on and talking more about what Bloom's taxonomy is, it might be worth taking a moment to talk about what it isn't. I don't think that a cognitive scientist or a psychologist would accept it as a model of human thought. But it isn't intended as a model of human thought. It's only intended as a framework for thinking about tasks that we ask students to do in their process of learning. Used in that way, it's very valuable. Usage for other purposes may void the warranty. Another objection to Bloom's taxonomy is that any given cognitive task might not slot neatly into one of the levels in the taxonomy. Finally, it's generally taken as part of Bloom's taxonomy that higher level tasks require lower level tasks. So, for example, if you've ever created anything, like writing a paper, you will have frequently sat back to evaluate whether it's any good, so it's fairly clear that creating involves evaluating. But does evaluating using an idea always involve analyzing using that idea, and to what extent do you need to understand an idea to apply it? So we shouldn't be too rigid or dogmatic in our thinking about Bloom's taxonomy. If you're new to Bloom's taxonomy, some of this ranking probably makes perfect sense. You're probably quite willing to say that remember is the least complex thing here, and especially given my example of creation tending to involve evaluation, perhaps you're willing to put create at the top of the ranking. These middle things, though, analyze, apply, and understand, you may be less clear on what the exact distinctions are between them and why they're in that order. Don't worry about that too much. As you play around with Bloom's taxonomy, that will become clearer. But also, don't get too hung up on always being able to slot every task unambiguously into a level on Bloom's taxonomy. You really just want to be able to classify tasks as high, mid, or low complexity. Indeed, the order probably isn't rigid. In Bloom's original taxonomy in 1956, the top two levels were reversed, and it was in 2001 in a revision that they got put in their current order. Also, just realize when you look up Bloom that you may come up with either the old or the new version depending on where you look. Also, you'll notice that the original was all stated in terms of nouns. Now, Anderson and Crathwall did not verbify it, but these days when people talk about Bloom's taxonomy, they tend to talk about it in terms of verbs because we're using it to think about learning objectives, which are all about what we have students do. The connection of the levels of Bloom's taxonomy to verbs is crucial when we're using it to think about objectives. Go online and just Google Bloom's taxonomy keyword. And you'll find that people have compiled often very long lists of keyword verbs. So now when you write an objective, you can look at what the key verb is in the objective, and that'll often give you a pretty good idea of what level of Bloom's taxonomy the objective is lying upon. We'll look at this more in lecture number four. For now, here's an example. Though I'm not going to classify objectives, I'm going to classify tasks which could exemplify objectives. So I could ask a student to define something like acceleration, and I would accept a sentence or an equation. In this case, perhaps I would accept a definition of a closely related thing called the average acceleration. In any case, just stating a definition is at the remember level. On the other hand, I might ask them to explain how the equation and the sentence mean the same thing, or something you might be wondering is what all these little arrows mean. Either way, it's an explanation, and that's probably at the understand level. Or I could give them some values and ask them to calculate the average acceleration. 
That might not look simple to you, but all they have to do if they understand the equation is take the values and plug them in, and they'll get the answer. So this is a straightforward application of the equation. Finally, and skipping a few levels in the taxonomy, I might give a question like this. Now this is quite complex. They would use the definition of acceleration somewhere in the solution, but it would also involve a number of other ideas. Those could be put together in many ways, and there are many possible solutions that would all arrive at the correct answer. So, this involves synthesis of several facts or ideas, and there are multiple correct ways to complete the task. Those are all characteristic of something at the create level in Bloom's taxonomy. Well, that's the end of this part of the lecture. If you're doing this through Moodle, then the lesson will have you click on to the next page, and it'll ask you a question before taking you to the next part.